lab-grown diamonds are gaining market share. And we are now joined by a great-great-grandson of the founder of Cartier, Louis-Francois Cartier. Jean Doucet is our guest, and he is a, a leading force in this lab-grown diamond business. Uh, you've opened a store, you have worked, you're a veteran of the jewelry industry, you've worked for high-end uh, jewelry suppliers, but now you have your own lab-grown diamond company. Tell us what you're doing. Are, are la have lab-grown diamonds shaken off any kind of stigma? Good afternoon, Andrew. Um, yes, I think that uh, lab growns have definitely shaken off a stigma, which is which was based on two ideas. Is it a real diamond? Yes, it is. And can I tell them apart from the natural diamonds? No, we can't. Even the best of us that have been in this industry for decades. Wow. And that was the pivotal moment where uh, it's starting to gain this adoption because people are realizing this is in fact a diamond. It has the beauty and the mystique of diamond that no longer has sort of the tenuous uh, tension mm -hmm. filled purchasing uh, cycle that people used to experience when committing to such a huge amounts of, of money to buy a natural diamond. You opened a store, the Jean Doucet store in West Hollywood, California. Is, is that your only, how do you sell the diamonds? Do you have other stores or do you sell through other outlets? Now, this is currently the, the first retail location of its kind. And actually, having pivoted into lab-grown diamonds after my entire career spent uh, representing and selling natural diamonds, that's why I, I opened that boutique, because I, I think that seeing is believing. I, I think that to speak to that stigma you were referring to, having people having the opportunity to come in into a retail location mm -hmm. and try these diamonds on their hands and and you can see it for yourself it's experiential then they realize it is a diamond and i can see for myself and the adoption is very very quick so the, that's the idea behind the boutique is really to to show people that it is in fact everything they thought a diamond should be there are two, I understand there are two basic methods of making a lab-grown diamond. I know we can't get into all the technicalities, but tell us about which method you favor, please. Yeah, so there's two methods, HPHT, uh, high pressure, high temperature, and then CVD, which is chemical vapor deposition. I prefer the CVD, the latter, because it produces a better material. Just like in everything else, it's important for your audience to realize that there are levels to lab-grown diamonds. You can try to grow a diamond very quickly and not really have a, a satisfying quality material, or you can grow a diamond with the best method and let's say take your time to really create the best material as in the rough diamond. Uh -huh. And th those are the diamond that I focus on. For me, the goal is to have lab-grown diamonds that I represent and sell be the epitome of what natural diamonds' ultimate beauty were my entire career. And that's the, that's the technology that we choose. I'm looking at a report um, on nationaljeweler.com. Your pieces generally start at about $24,000 US? No, the, our engagement rings start around five thousand oh, okay. dollars. Yes, and they used to start when I was working in natural in upper fifteens, almost twenty thousand dollars. Our average order value when we were a all natural brand was thirty thousand dollars, and it's now nine thousand dollars. So a, a huge, huge difference into the average order that uh, consumer you have to look at it as as and as at a, as an absolute liberation and a, a a a pivotal moment for for our industry which has been set in its in its ways for decades so um it's a very empowering moment for consumer which is why i decided mm -hmm. with all my background all my traditional training to pivot sure. into lab on diamond because i think it's the best it's ever been for our consumers. And why 
is because they no longer need to compromise to buy a diamond.